So today's subject is going to be something I've been kind of avoiding talking about because it's quite hard. It's like probably the most shaping and maybe traumatic things that ever happened to me. Um, but before we get into all the gravity, uh, some Evans Witches news. So this has just arrived in the mail. Um, I ordered a beautiful cover. Um, for Forbidden Road and it's coming out on February 1st. Um, I've also written two free short stories and they're currently in editorial but I'll let you know once they're out. And I gotta say I am <laughs> working really hard. Everything I try to do is very very difficult. I'm trying to do a Goodreads giveaway for this book but because it's not on pre-order yet I can't actually list it because it doesn't like recognize it on their system and stuff like this happens all the time. I keep having to find tricks like do I put it on a different place so then it does go on the system. Do I ask them to add it manually? So yeah, that is my life right now. <laughs> and I actually wrote another short story out of the blue. I was reading Abigail Reynolds. Um, if you've never heard of her, she just writes Pride and Prejudice variations. And I quite like the original, so I thought, hey, I should give it a try. And I just loved it so much that I thought after like three of them, why don't I do on myself and just a short story? And I really like liked it. Um, and I'll tell you more about it um, when we get to the time. So that's what's been new in Evans Witch's World. And we also have a recipe from Simple Healthy Raw Vegan today, stuffed peppers. So that's at the end of the video. And now we get to the part that I've kind of been trying not to do. But since I'm here to talk about what's inspired me and what's what's shaped my life. This is possibly the number one most, most affecting thing that ever happened to me. Um, when I was a little girl, I had an uncle who was like a parent to me. And we would play with his kids, they would play with us my parents would leave us and go and this is when this happened so I didn't know he had a heart disease I was about a little over seven at the time and I saw this really vibrant person who was alive and funny and everybody loved him and I never thought that I could lose him um, I was there the night it happened. My parents had just returned from leaving us there for a couple of days and going on vacation. And then they went and took us home. And about four in the night, I think. I don't really know the exact hour, but that was his last. And it was a shock to the whole family. My mom's side of the family is very large. Uh, she was one of ten siblings. Suddenly my whole world was... It just crashed. <laughs> I didn't know how to cope with the fact that someone could just one day be gone. It was... Again, I didn't know he was sick and he just one day disappeared. One day he was there, the next day he's gone. And I, the last thing I remember, because I don't have any memories of him, I, my, I just have that all completely blocked out, is the, the week of the funeral. Um, in my religion, we mourn for a week. And I remember that for me, he was a real person. He was, he had good things, he had bad things. And everyone started making him perfect and that took him away from me that made it really hard like when I remember my grandpa my grandpa made it to 97 other side and I remember how he drove us nuts and I love that I remember all his flaws it was great a lot of grandparents say oh when would you come visit me when would you come visit me he would hang up on me on the phone he would just not feel like talking anymore he would suddenly say okay goodbye I admired him 
I liked all those things. And when my uncle died, he suddenly became some sort of saint and that made it even worse because now I didn't, I didn't feel like I could hold on to my true memories of him and then, and then I lost those. And I don't remember him. I met someone in my 20s and I felt that when I was around him, it's like I felt like I was around my uncle. They didn't look at all alike. There was no real reason. And I remember telling my mother about this and she said, maybe there's something in the vibe. <laughs> I, I don't remember the exact words, but then I suddenly started remembering what it felt like to be around my uncle. Like I would f have a memory of being on the beach and knowing he was there and feeling that he was there, but not actually seeing him or uh, going out for barbecue. And, and then feeling that he was there, knowing what I ate that day, even though I still can't see him. Um, I didn't know that I have this trauma, so I thought it was okay. And I didn't know that I wasn't. I was too small to understand. I did not understand that people around me were becoming depressed and that not, not only did I lose my uncle, I also lost the society around me, the support around me, because they were dealing too. Um, I didn't understand why certain people started behaving differently after this. I, I just, I did, had no tools to deal. And the first thing that that did to me is just cause a tremendous fear of losing another person, specifically my actual parents, because he was like a parental figure. Even now I have a fear to lose people, need to please people because the fear of losing them and knowing that I could have made them happier while they were here, I could have gotten to know them better, that's still with me. <laughs> I discovered I have this deep trauma uh, when in my 20s I had problems sleeping and I'm talking about fight club style insomnia, two to four hours max a night of sleep, that's it. And. I thought, oh, I must be stressed because I was a student. Oh, I must be like, yeah, a lot of things I did wrong and I would make a video about sleep and how to fix it, but you can only fix your sleep hygiene, which is when you go to sleep, what you eat, how you behave around it. But if there is something that is causing you in such torment, then you have to acknowledge it and acknowledge that it's there. And he died in his sleep and I was afraid to die too. And it took a long time to figure this out. And, and I remember the day that things changed. Like once I understood that this is something that I've been carrying with me, in old trauma there is wisdom. And this was it. This was, uh, <laughs> I'm shivering inside. Um, this was where he had taught me the most important lesson in life. What was so traumatic about him is that he died young and he died vital in my eyes. I didn't know he was sick. He lived fully. Death found him dancing. That is how I want to go. And that is a huge realization. To know that I want to live fully no matter what it takes, all the way, throw, said it, so that not when I come to die, realize that I hadn't lived. And that has shaped me and my choices in life. This is why I live in Scotland. I was not scared to make a big move. I was not scared to make a big change. This is why I'm writing these books. This is why I took a huge leap of faith, left the standard desk job and did this. Uh, this is why I am doing YouTube. This is why I'm telling you about my life because I feel alive when I do this. This is why I go out to the Highlands. This is why I go hiking. I want to know that I have lived deliberately. And I think that this is what it gave me. Um, other than that, it is the hardest thing that ever happened to me. And part of it would always stay. Part of it would always shape how I see the world and how I see people. Thank you. <laughs> for hearing this. I don't really have anything more to say. I promised you a recipe, so we'll just get to that. And I wish that if anything tough ever happened to you, because God knows Earth is a boot camp. <laughs> Whatever hard lesson, you would actually learn it, and you would actually benefit from it, and you would actually grow. I love you. Bye.